when we define the boundary conditions on the pressure, we'll be working in terms of a gauge pressure rather than absolute pressure. So we need to understand what's the difference between gauge and absolute pressures. Let's do that. If I look at this graphic here, um, this represents um, absolute zero pressure. That's perfect vacuum. And the absolute pressure is the pressure measured with, with respect to um, absolute zero or absolute, you know, or perfect vacuum. And that can be a big number. Uh, for atmospheric pressure, it's of the order of 10 to the power of 5 in Pascals, and that's a big number. Why is that a problem? To understand that, um, let me go back to my mesh. Uh, by the way, if your mesh gets askew and so on, I can, you know, I can go in here. Let's see if I have something that looks like that. I can go in here, I can say display views and just pick default, or I can say um, front view and say apply and close. And if I zoom in here into that particular cell, and let me just move this over here a little bit and zoom out a little bit. Okay, so let's say, if, you know, the solver is doing conservation of momentum in the x direction. So one of the contributing terms is the pressure on that particular control volume. And to calculate the pressure it would, in the axial direction, it would need the pressure here and the pressure here. Um, let me annotate that. So let's say that pressure is pressure on the right face times an area, and the pressure force on this face is pressure, let's say, on the left face times an area. Now in this kind of a flow, you're going to get very little variations in the absolute pressure across the cell. And you can imagine as you refine the mesh, you know, those variations are going to be even smaller, uh, which means that you're going to get small differences of large numbers. And that leads to round off errors, so-called round off errors, because of the finite precision of the computer. So how do we get around this problem of, you know, having small differences of large numbers? Um, it's done by working in terms of a gauge pressure. So you define, you split the absolute pressure into a reference pressure plus a gauge pressure. And the reference pressure is picked by the user. Um, and so if you pick the reference pressure to be an appropriate value, you're going to get, you know, the gauge pressure is going to basically check variations from that reference. Um, so if in our problem, you know, there are going to be variations around the atmospheric pressure. So if I pick the reference pressure to be one atmosphere, then this is going to be a small value of gauge pressure, a small value of gauge pressure. And when I take the difference, it doesn't matter whether I take the difference of the absolute pressure or the gauge pressure, um, I'll get the same value. Um, I'm going to get small differences or small numbers. As an analogy, let's say, you know, on the left face, the, um, the pressure force is, say, 2,000.02 um, in, in whatever units. And if it is, you know, if your computer, let's say, has only a precision of four digits, that's going to be rounded off to 2,000. And on the right face, let's say it's 2,000.02. One. So when it takes a difference, um, if you have a precision of only four digits, you know, this is going to be 2,000, this is going to be 2,000, it's going to say, hey, you know, there's no pressure differential, whereas that small number matters. Um, whereas if I subtract out 2,000, that would be my reference, I'm going to get the difference between 0.02 and 0.01, and that'll fit within, you know, the precision of, um, of four digits, and I'm going to get the right result. So you see how working in terms of the gauge pressure is advantageous. And if I go to, um, and if I go back here, the place where you um, set the reference pressure is under operating conditions. And the default is 
is one atmosphere. So the operating pressure is basically that reference pressure. 